Welcome to the Land Cruiser Project. What we do on this channel is review the listings from uh, auction websites such as Cars and Bids, uh, Bring a Trailer, or Craigslist, Facebook, whatever. And we're looking for 80 series, 100 series, and 200 series Land Cruisers. Uh, and the reason we do this is to um, just identify common issues that pop up on these vehicles. Some of these vehicles are, you know, kind of really cool and unique. Um, and also, um, yeah, we do this to better inform you should you be in the market or in the position to yeah, buy one of these vehicles. So um, despite the algorithm, the YouTube algorithm, you've arrived here and happy to have you here. But let's go ahead and look at the vehicle that we're going to study today, which is a 1993. It says FZG80, but since it's powered by a 5.3 liter uh, uh, GM monstrosity, <laughs> Um, yeah, it's not an FCJ80, but it was at one point. But let's go over the details and yeah, and see what we find out. So this one's located in Oneida, Tennessee. Uh, it's got 303,000 miles on the body and chassis, presumably. Uh, it's got the uh, 5.3 liter Vortec V8. Uh, it's got a four-speed automatic transmission. We'll find out if that's original or not. It's been repainted in green. Not sure what the original color was. It's got sable cloth upholstery, which uh, I don't know what sable is let's see looks like it's the oak kind of like the tan uh, it's got a worn winch got all sorts of modifications um, so yeah we'll go through those we won't go through all, every single one but it looks like um, at least by the names they've picked out some good stuff but yeah heavily modified vehicle and it looks like this uh, Vortec uh, engine has uh, some aftermarket camshafts got um, you know like probably long tube headers and partial service records uh, and it's got the removed factory parts, probably not including the engine. But let's go through the details that we can here. Uh, again, it's just got lots of modifications, so we'll just kind of hit the high the high notes. Um, but yeah, it shows 303,000 miles, which we've talked about. It's got a clean Carfax report and a clean Tennessee title in the seller's name. Um, there is a reserve on this auction. It's currently bid up to 24,000. It's got two days left. Uh, so yeah, it's, you know, it's probably got some room to run, but you know, the mileage on the body and the chassis is not, uh, inconsequential. So the truck left the factory in dark emerald pearl. Uh, so that's the kind of dark green, uh, color and it was refinished under the current ownership. Uh, additional work included removal of the fender flares, which is a nice touch on these 80 series and then application of the bed liner to, yeah, to those spots. Um, curious how they um, closed up those holes, whether they, you know, welded them shut or whether they used Bondo. That's a good question to ask if you're uh, concerned about that. It's got a sunroof, uh, power mirrors like the all-wood rear window wiper, and it's got a Delta vehicle systems front bumper with a worn winch and a synth synthetic line. And then it's got a coastal off-road aluminum rear bumper. So it's nice that it's, uh, that it's aluminum. And yeah, it's got custom painted depot headlights and yeah, let's see what else, a Bofin Cruisers roof rack. So that's one of the kind of like, I don't know if it's like the original, like kind of Prince ish style um, rack. And I hate to even say that because yeah, Bofin had this, this profile that sits down in the gutter. Yeah. Well before, um, yeah, Prince at least my understanding, well before Prince and some of the others were available and the rest kind of like kind of copycatted it. But anyway, the windshield and rear window were replaced in April of 2018 and there's some, uh, yeah, noted flaws, uh, including paint chips and dings. It's got some method 17 inch wheels with 35 inch tires. Uh, let's see, it's got a 2.5 inch suspension lift and icon, um, uh, shocks and and let's see king shocks steering stabilizer up front uh so in november of 2021 include greasing the front wheel bearings as well as replacing the front brake pads and left front rotor yeah, it's kind of weird they just did one of them you usually do those in pairs um, but it's got this kind of tan or sable cloth interior and let's see inside you know, there's there's lots of stuff it's got air, air conditioning pioneer head unit trailer brake, brake controller an arb refrigerator powerpoint a starter kill switch a cell function cup and phone holder which is i'd assume is this one and yeah blah 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 let's see the air conditioning compressor was replaced in august 2022 and the truck is not equipped with airbags yeah, so these, um, yeah, 93, 94s uh, wouldn't have had airbags originally, so that's not a modification. Uh, let's see. So the six-digit odometer shows 303, which we've talked about, approximately 50,000 of which were added under current ownership. The tachometer and oil pressure gauge are inoperative. So it looks like in doing this engine swap, they didn't um, 
yeah, tie in the factory gauges and they're probably relying on something else. Um, so that V8 was, the, the GM V8 was installed in 2022 and he's equipped with the comp cams, camshaft and hooker headers. The water pump, uh, battery, fan blade and fuse holder have been replaced since August 2022. It always makes me like <laughs> curious, like, I don't know, maybe they dumped the engine in and, you know, again, I would... I would think if I were running the project, yeah, I would like fully go through that engine before dropping it in and, you know, having all that expense. But I, I mean, I know the battery, the fan blade, fuse holder, those are all pretty minor things. But yeah, the water pump, I, I think that'd be something you'd take care of beforehand. Uh, let's see, it's ratted. So it's got a, um, a GM transmission, the 4L60-E. Um, um, it's a yeah, common one, at least, you know, from what I've heard of. And then the U-joints, front knuckle spindle oil, gaskets, axle seals, and wheel seals were all replaced in 2022, and the locking center differential is inoperative. Yeah, that's a big thing. You can get that working. Well, let's see, the removed lower grille panel. This is like lower valence we talk about a lot. Uh, rear bumper covers and center console will accompany the, tr accompany the truck. So, uh, yeah, you don't get a 1FZ uh, FE with, with the cell of this. Let's go ahead and look at the Carfax. Carfax shows eight previous owners. That is a significant amount of owners. We saw in the early photos that the um, yeah the undercarriage looks pretty good. Um, anyway, so from 1993 when it was new, roughly new, to 1999, so just in you know five and a half years, it looks like um, 126,000 miles were put on it. That, so that, yeah, that's a lot of miles, real quick. So it's you know 20 almost 25,000 miles a year. Um, and then you know Texas, Arizona, uh, Arizona, you know mileage is still ticking up looks like it was in Oregon mileage is still going up yeah it's kind of slowed down quite a bit through the uh you know, the early 2010s and late uh, 2000s and then 2014 it had 216,000 miles so pretty good usage from 2014 to 2017 under this particular owner the owner number seven and then owner number eight I'd presume the current owner since they picked it up um in uh yeah in, with 260,000 miles in October of 2017 and yeah it's kind of stayed in that state. So, and that's when it came to Tennessee. So pretty good uh, history with regard to like Rust Belt states. There's really nothing in Google or nothing in uh, vehiclehistory.com about the history. Um, so yeah, presume, you know, pretty, pretty clean. There are a handful of videos. They're definitely worth checking out. Um, seeing the 80 series with this type of powertrain is, it's fun to see. I, it would, I feel like it would feel very similar to that, um, you know, 2021 Land Cruiser that we saw with the with the supercharger, yeah, I bet it's a I bet it's a blast to drive. Anyway, let's go ahead and look through the photos, see if there's anything that kind of jumps out at us. Um, obviously, there's tons of modifications, so we'll kind of breeze through these and just see if there's anything um, yeah, out of the ordinary or particularly cool. Um, I I no, I'm not not sure I like the sticker up here, but you know everybody's got their own taste. But I do like the Delta Vehicle Systems front bumper. Yeah, pretty beefy. I I think I'd like to see them built in aluminum. I think they're all steel. Uh, but anyway, pretty good looking truck. Those 35 inch tires in the lift. Yeah, that looks good. Um, I do like the green with the with the bronze wheels. Uh, I do see a little dent here on this front um, passenger side fender, and yeah, otherwise it looks like pretty good work. On looks like that didn't you know is both in the paint and in the um, like the rhino lining there. But yeah, it's kind of cool how that bumper you know goes up and takes the takes the place of that valence. It's kind of a cool design. I like it, especially considering that valence is, you know, it's like so flimsy. Um, anyway, moving on to the passenger side, kind of like on the bright side, the broad side here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Paint job looks decent from at least this distance. Um, you can see there's a little like kind of, you know, gas or exhaust. I think that's the exhaust kind of dumping down in front of the rear axle. Um, yeah, sorry, I keep hitting back on the photos. Anyway, uh, it looks like the license plates have skeered. Yeah, that's probably an issue in most jurisdictions. Need to get that out on this uh, on this will, um, or or elsewhere, so, so uh, law enforcement can see it. Moving around to the driver's side, yeah, looks looks pretty well put together. Again, hard to tell from this angle. Um, do appreciate the different lighting photo. Maybe there's a little kind of scratch coming down the. Um, yeah, that D pillar on the driver's side. Yeah, the finish on this coastal off-road bumper looks pretty good. Hard to tell what's it just this looks like a weird kind of tube. It's hard to tell if it's rectangular or if it's square. 
Uh, yeah, just kind of an interesting thing. Usually it's like squared off, but I mean, the tube does look like it's <laughs> square tube instead of rectangular. That wouldn't really make sense. But yeah, pretty good looking, pretty good looking truck. Uh, it looks like it's got some, in this light, you can see some pinstriping down the paint, but um, I'm, I'm just glad it doesn't have a snorkel. That's nice. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of putting stickers or any obstructions on the passenger side, like rear quarter glass. Um, that's a kind of like a no-no in my book when it comes to yeah, maintaining visibility. But yeah, it's got pretty good like departure angles, approach angles look good. Yeah, good looking, good looking build. Uh, definitely about 300,000 miles worth of rock chips on the front. I do see a little kind of like a slight difference in gap, perhaps on this passenger side between the headlight, um, you know, compared to what we see on the driver's side. Again, you're not, you know, you're not buying this looking for a beauty queen, but you know, it's worth pointing out that maybe seems to open up just a little bit. Uh, this particular age, 1993, they're not going to have VIN stickers, um, Anyway, back here where you'd normally find like a Toyota logo, uh, you can see the holes. Let me actually maximize these this, these photos for your viewing pleasure. But yeah, you've got holes where that um, yeah that badge goes. Those aren't covered up. Um, it'd be easy to put either some like circle tape or something over that to clean it up. I'm not sure what to make of all the stickers. You got like Dad Wagon. You got like a Vegan. Uh, I didn't really pay attention to all the stickers on that um, passenger side rear quarter window, but. Anyway, it's got all the right stuff for Instagram and, and all that. Uh, so this is on the front passenger side fender. Um, they've got a, a quarter here for reference. Looks like some sort of paint defect. Um, I mean, looking up this close, I mean, the paint doesn't look particularly, yeah, like shiny. Um, as you're looking through here, but, you know, again, you're not looking for anything. Uh, uh, super amazing when it comes to the condition here. It, it is old. Uh, I do note the driver or the seats, while, you know, they are... Um, yeah, the nice kind of cloth type. I do note that the cloth's hanging down from the uh, the headrest on the passenger side, and that there's yeah some pretty significant staining on um, yeah the bolster on this driver's seat. Uh, moving to the driver door card, uh, good to see at least relative to the paint job that like these bolts weren't painted over. Um, I do see an aftermarket stereo uh, or a speaker here, and then also the uh, yeah this trim piece around the that see that would bug me bug me so much being like one of those touch surfaces that you always hit you know each and every time you get in and out of the vehicle, um, well rather getting in I guess getting out of the vehicle is the way to say that but anyway that would bug me those are available I'd I'd replace that in a heartbeat. Uh, it looks like it's got this Delta Vehicle Systems uh, center console. I've, I've heard those are pretty nice. Uh, yeah, they look look pretty cool. Uh, you've got some wiring coming through here. This is probably, um, yeah, feeding, you know, like these gauges and, you know, the rest of the instrumentation up here from the from the engine. But yeah, looks, I mean, looks looks pretty tidy. Um, yeah, so what did, what did they mention? So the fuel pressure and maybe the, yeah, there's one other one, one other gauge that doesn't work out. I presume it's, yeah, these two here on the left side. Um, in the other swaps that I've seen, they they usually do get those working, so they just must have elected not to not to tie those in. I'd also presume that yeah, they probably don't have like the gear selector, the gear indicator stuff set up. These are the prices you pay to have all that V8 power. A little like staining discoloration here at the bottom of the uh, the air conditioning controls. It's kind of weird. Yeah, I would like to see some blanks in there. Like little things like that, I think that could, you know, really add some value, even though, you know, you probably wouldn't spend more than like 15 bucks on those. Uh, moving to the back, you have some like light staining here against the edge. Um, yeah, otherwise it looks pretty good. That's kind of a cool touch, you know, talking about these Delta Vehicle Systems uh, center consoles, you know, in the original plastic uh, center console, you know, it has the same style where it, you know, kind of like dog legs here, and then it's got the little vents. That's kind of a nice touch. I didn't know that. Uh, we didn't get a photo of the the passenger front door card. Um, yeah, looking here at the passenger side, there's a couple scratches. It's got the original yeah, speaker grills. Um, yeah, looks looks a lot better in the uh, the second row here than it does uh, at least in the front regarding the seats. Uh, we'll note that the meshing or the mesh on the back of the uh, front row seats that's missing. Um, but it does have at least the, as far as I can tell, all the, the seat brackets or the covers for the, for the seat brackets attaching it to the floor. 
moving to the what driver rear door card yeah it looks pretty normal just some more scratches um all right so on, looking at the footwell of the driver uh you've got probably this is like an obd2 connection for the new engine um i'm assuming that engine is um you know, OBD2 compliant, it's newer than 1993. Um, I'd presume this is like that kill switch, not a great location for it, but <laughs> uh, if, yeah, if somebody's going to steal your truck, yeah, that's probably the first spot that they'll look. Anyway, uh, interesting little something here indicating American Patriot. Um, if you're military, thank you for your service. A handful of other kind of stickers and patches. Uh, missing the lens here on the dome light. It uh, looks like the bulb's missing too. But at least the trim here around the sunroof, that's all in place. Um, it's got some sort of yeah, shelf here for the rear cargo area. Um, yeah, not, not sure how I feel about those, but yeah, it's there. Uh, looking here at the back, it's got like an aftermarket um, kind of tailgate cover. Um, they're, they're pretty nice. They, they're a little bit more functional on the 80 series because there's not a panel, a plastic panel covering the gap here. Um, in one of my videos, I actually have one of these or had one of these installed on my, my hundred series. And yeah, the little filler panel here would catch on this every time. It's kind of a crappy design, but not an issue here on the 80 series. Uh, I do appreciate for safety Do appreciate the, uh, you know, the stickers here, uh, calling, you know, probably reflective stickers if you're stuck on the side of the road. A uh, pretty clean cargo area. Um, I do note, at least for this seat, looks like a couple of these bolts are missing um, on this bracket here on the passenger side seat mount. It seem at least the two that I can see on the driver side, those are in place. And yeah, this looks looks like just the lap belt. Um, yeah, kind of hanging down there. Yeah, but sure enough, those um, yeah, it's it's you're missing those those bolts on that side. Uh, there's your little fridge thing. So there's, yeah, presumably some wiring there. And then I, I saw this earlier. So this is just above the A pillar above the driver door. It looks like some rust there. Um, don't like, I don't, I, I've never understood this. Like, don't let this like keep growing, get some sandpaper, clean it up, put whatever color you want. If you, you know, if you've got touch of paint, just do something. Um, yeah, don't let this grow and, you know, get worse. Just, just doesn't make sense. All right. Moving to the engine bay. I am going to be yeah out of my element here. Um, it's interesting to see, I wonder, you know, here at like the, you know, the heater valve, it's interesting to see the original clamps. I'd really be surprised they didn't replace these, especially at 300,000 miles. Uh, maybe they use the original style, but I don't know, maybe, maybe it's all original. Uh, looks like there's, yeah, some sort of like fan shroud here. Um, yeah, you'd really like to see when you do these swaps, there's, there's so much, um, yeah, modification and customization that you've got to do in fabrication. Um, would like to see that get closed off and improve the performance of the radiator, but maybe it's, maybe it's not a big deal. Um, yeah, for this, but yeah, you can see like the AC lines, there's all sorts of modifications that need to happen, but overall it's like, it seems pretty, seems pretty tidy. Uh, not, you know, not seeing, this is a really long, uh, coolant hose, but not seeing like any like random junctions and stuff like that. That's, that's a good sign. There's a shot of the headers. It looks like you can see the oil filter down there. Um, yeah, nothing, yeah, nothing I'm going to be able to comment on through these photos. Looking at the rear diff, uh, remember this is where the corrosion is usually the worst. And yeah, looks looks really good. And yeah, nothing really to note of there. No leaks. Um, yeah, the U-joints look, look good. Moving here to the front differential. Yeah, similarly clean. Um, looks like a pretty tidy install with the, um, yeah, with the under engine on the on that GM engine. All right. Detail photos of the stickers on the suspension. Um, you know, these, these photos are nice. Like it shows the, you know, the corrosion situation. Um, however, you know, you have no idea whether or not like the bushings in these control arms, you know, so this is the upper control arm on the rear suspension on the rear axle. I mean, you have no idea if those have been replaced at this age and with that mileage, you'd hope that they would have been, but you know, if, if you want it to ride nice and quiet, that's definitely something you need to you know, think about. Um, yeah, replacing at some point. Looks like it has been off road. You can see some scratches, some scrapes, a little bit of rust on the fuel tank skid plate. But otherwise, yeah, corrosion situation on the frame looks really, really good. Yeah, so the one like knock on this is just that it doesn't have lockers. That would be, you know, that would be ideal if it you know, if it had the uh, yeah the swapped engine and the lockers. But anyway, here's all the original equipment. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna get some photos of the. So they did go through the engine to rebuild it. So I wonder if, yeah, the, the install on the, um, 
uh, what do you call it? The install on the water pump was, it just didn't, didn't go well. And yeah, good luck or good job on them for getting all the wiring sorted out. But all right. Well, very cool. Um, yeah, anything else? Just some more detailed shots and yeah, then we're back. Yeah. It's hard to figure out where to price these. Um, yeah, the mileage is high. It'd be, you, you, you know, unless a, an engine's blown like early on in its life. Yeah. We're, we're not really seeing a lot of, um, you know, engine swaps at, at low mileage, but yeah, this, yeah, it's a total shot in the dark, but yeah, this, this will probably, I will say you would think that the increased power and like the better fuel economy arguably would, would increase the cost, you know, quite a bit on these. However, because of all the customization, if, if anything goes wrong and especially if it's not well documented and if the shop that did, it's not like still, you know, either not like warranting it, but still supporting it, it can be in result in a total headache. So it's like, it's not as huge of like a, a value adder that, that you might think. So I, I think, I don't know, it'll go up to like 35,000, 36. I, I just don't see anybody paying for more than that. Um, there have been a handful of these that have showed up on like bring it or not bring a trailer, but I hate mud and they just, you know, they just don't get, you know, as big a money as you think. So we'll say, we'll say 36,500 and we'll leave it at that. But anyway, good looking truck. It'd be fun to drive for sure. You know, I've had an opportunity to buy one of these um, that had been swapped. Just ultimately, I personally couldn't get comfortable with the swap and the work that was done. And I think this one, you know, like you saw in the description, it's got some, you know, like questionable or not, you know, kind of like incomplete records. But anyway, what do you think on the price? You think 30, 36 fives, yeah, too, too much, too little? Um, it's, it's a hefty price to pay for all that power. But you might as well just buy a... Uh, yeah, 200 series at that price, you can get a pretty nice early, uh, yeah, early, you know, 200. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have a good rest of your day and yeah, I'll see you later.